The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look here at this uh, German DAX. We've got a uh, really nice three drive pattern. We'll expand on that in just a minute when we look at the NASDAQ. But uh, the next thing we want to take a quick look at here, of course, is the FTSE because we're seeing a little three drive pattern here in the FTSE. And remember, these numbers up here at 7,500 are really long term you know, Fibonacci numbers, so they're not making new highs. The NASDAQ has made a new high this morning, folks. Um, I guess I should cover that first, and then there's something really interesting that's, go that's going to be happening here in the next few days that uh, not many people are aware. I certainly wasn't aware of it, and one of our friends here at TFNN dropped me an email uh, showing me what was happening, and I'll share that with you uh, in just a minute. But let's take a quick look here uh, at the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, we'll just look at it uh, from a, a daily basis. You'll notice here where you see that ratio up the top where it says 108, that means that it's gone above the highs of September, even though we had that drop from 78 down to 58. We've now made new highs. Notice the ABCD pattern from March the 11th to where we are right now. That measures right up to 78.75, and that was a high so far today. I don't know if that's going to continue that, but this market has had virtually no correction since December the 26th, so it's certainly uh, getting ready for it. Now, we've got an unusual event coming up, folks. I'm going to post it into the room here so you folks can take a look at it. You can, you can uh, test the stuff yourself because I got this. I didn't have a chance to uh, test it to see if it's correct, but the person that sent it to me has always given me good information. So here's what it is. There's potential hazardous market conditionings in the Japanese Golden Week. Japan has an extended spring vacation called the Golden Week from the 27th of April to the 6th of May. This will be the longest market closure since the end of World War II, creating potentially hazardous market conditions due to low volatility and ex expected cross all markets during Asian hours. Low liquidity, especially during Asian hours, can create extreme flash crashes. Recent examples of these include the 3rd of January, 2019. The Japanese yen cross rate was up 10%. On the 7th of October, the, the British pound was down 10%. What does it mean? It means cuidado, 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 amigo. That means be careful, danger, danger. Cuidado means danger. So be very, very aware of this between the 27th of April and the 6th of May during the Asian sections. Now, what that means is when we're closing in the United States here around 5 p.m., they're waking up over in uh, Japan, and that's where these things can occur. So uh, if you if you want to be really gutsy, you can put an order in way above or way below the markets, and you might catch one of those falling safes. This cowboy is not interested in that kind of stuff, but it's going to be interesting. So we need to pay attention to it because one of the major, uh, well, it's the third largest country uh, in the world, and uh, we want uh, a G a GDP, I mean, economy. So we have to pay attention to that being closed. From, you know, that's what, 20, that's 10 days, boys and girls. You know, we can't even be closed here for more than four days because of the Constitution. We've got to have the banks open within four days. The only time that hasn't happened was in 9-11, and I think we extended it out by about three days. But uh, that's what we're paying attention to. So that'll be really interesting. Folks, the euro has broken down badly. We've been talking about that for uh, a long time now. And now we, we're trading actually 100 pips below the 61% retracement now. We're trading at 111.25. Uh, uh, this tells us that, you know, we're probably heading down to the uh, at the minimum, the minimum of the 108.50 and most probably to the 106 level because the 106 level is that big A, B, C, D pattern. And as you can see here, the time down between the A leg 
and the B leg and the C leg and the D leg comes in right near the end of April. And what is the end of April? That is the between the 27th and May 6th. So maybe there's going to be something really big happening in the currencies at that time. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. But um, these currencies have broken down. This means that the U.S. dollar is spiking, which we have been uh, talking about a little bit here. You'll notice here that this is where we were Friday. And then yesterday we posted the uh, update of this, uh, which is up around this night. We're almost at the 98 level already. So, uh, in fact, we, yeah, I think we are. I think we hit it already today. So that, that is getting up to this level that should be very, very interesting. On the long-term weekly chart, by the way, those of you that receive my videos, uh, I'm very sorry, but the videos are broken. I didn't realize it until about 1.30 in the morning, and I have to, you know, buy a new program because something's happened to the sound quality. There, well, it's so it's so weak, I can't, you know, can't get anything uh, done on it. So I'll have to get new videos uh, done today, and then I'll I'll send them out. But we sent those out on the the currency markets because they were so very, very important. And we sent it out on, of course, the gold and the silver because they're also very important. And we sent it out on the, on the um, crude oil. The crude oil market was another one that we looked at. All of those are lining up, you know, very, very interesting. So we'll see here. We'll keep an eye on these as we go through. We've got a big move here in some of these stocks that we talked about this week. Here is the one for Microsoft. Softy is up about 6%. It's trading at 131, folks. Um, that is the 1.618 expansion on the weekly chart going back to September. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be real interesting. Oh, this is a... There's really uh, there's some good good information. Shane Smolian just told me that the CME has um, some information about the uh, Golden Week in Japan, and that'll be interesting. By the way, uh, hopefully we're going to have Shane on next week, and that'll be very, very uh, exciting. I know you guys have been asking about him for a long time, but he is going to uh, uh, try to get on. He would try to be on yesterday, but little uh, Jackson, Action Jackson from Disco Tech, his little five-year-old son is... Uh, He's got bronchitis, so uh, he's playing Mr. Mom today. But we'll get Shan Shane on just as soon as uh, soon as he's available, which will be uh, early next week. Um, uh, the Microsoft is at 131. Now we've had, you know, several others. You know, Facebook. Look at Facebook has has been another one that has just gone, um, you know, really ballistic here. Let's get this one up here so we can take a quick look at it. Oh dear, what happened to it? I had it right here in front of me, and now it's disappeared. I am I have a series of disappearing charts, I guess. Hold on, hold on. I I, I know the pattern. All I got to do is find the doggone thing. Ah, there it is. Here's Facebook. I just wanted to show you where it's trading. Uh, it's up another. I guess it's up about five or six percent. It's trading at 198. 198 is the 78 percent retracement from the island reversal we made back. At 220, we went from 220, dropped 100 bucks down to 124, and now we've rallied up to uh, 200. So we're we're giving we got 78 percent of that back, and it's all you know earnings related with another big gap. Look at this gap that's going to be on Facebook today, from a 188 to uh, <laughs> to 200. Oh my goodness, that's a monster. All right, let's take a break here. 877-927-6648. <clears throat> The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got a caller from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mr. Z, how are you doing this morning? Larry, I am very good, um, and I, uh, I pat you on the shoulder and give you a hat tip and a hand for uh, doing all the shows recently. Um, <laughs> and um, it, uh, it's a much, much better job that I could ever do, so uh, congrats on that. And I wanted to ask you, Larry, please, on the dollar Swiss franc, uh, you have been um, tracking for us the movements in the euro versus the dollar, which is weakening. And, of course, uh, the Swiss franc being right in the heart of euro tracks pretty closely to the euro itself with some differences. And uh, I am on alert trading from the long side and uh, I guess being on alert for the potential for a major breakout in the dollar Swiss franc or said a different way, weakening of the Swiss franc versus the dollar. Can you show your weekly and or monthly charts and and identify where the upside potential is on this, please? You betcha. I'll put up the weekly so you can take a look at it. Uh, one of the things that you'll see on this weekly chart was way back in uh, January of 2015 when they had that giant bank robbery, you know, where it dropped uh, $20,000 and went up $20,000 in a matter of about an hour that's when they played games with the euro but the breakout level is at 104 john uh, breaking above 104 sets up a, a minimum of uh, another uh, 10 points higher up around the 114 level and uh you know that could be a really big move the interesting thing is uh, the low that we made back here in january of 2018 was a beautiful 382 retracement of that low from uh, December of 2000 or January of 2015. So this is very positive. We've had higher bottoms, higher tops all along the way. And this last few weeks has been, you know, pretty much a, a runaway move to the upside because it's been following the reverse position of the euro. So it does look pretty good. The, the, the Swiss is certainly weakening, you know, to the U.S. dollar based on these charts. Uh, thank you on that. Uh, I, uh, I'm just looking back. Uh, your previous post, you posted the uh, daily charts, 
with mm -hmm. all your fib numbers and Pesavento patterns. I wanted to ask you, uh, and knowing you're a very disciplined trader, Larry, uh, what, what pullback would you need to see for the USS, for the USSF currency pair to be a uh, low risk buy setup according to the way you do things? Well, John, since, you know, we've been up for, you know, we've been up well over a month. We've been up five weeks with basically no correction at all. So if it's really that bullish, what you'd be looking for is a correction down to that 101 level, which was the old breakout level. And that's also the 382 retracement of the low made five weeks ago. Let's put this in so the folks can take a look at it because it's a really interesting thing. This is what we saw with Platinum a few weeks ago when it was doing the, the same type of pattern. Let's just get this so you folks can take a quick look at it. You're, you're, if, we're trading around 102.10 right now, and if we get down to this 101 level, you'll see that's the old breakout level that we had. Uh, back in November, we touched it again in March and pulling back one more time, which would be a 382 retracement. And if it did it over a maybe a five to 10 day period, oh, that would be uh, that would be lick the chops time because I think that would be a really nice low risk entry point in a market that is uh, I got much, much higher to go. And you're certainly trading in the direction of the trend. You know, that would, that would yeah. be interesting. Then I am all mentally prepared uh, to okay. act if something like that should unfold. So thank you. Yeah. Um, can I um, ask a related question? You you just mentioned uh, the uh, the dollar yen currency pair and this upcoming Golden Week holiday in the country of Japan. And I, I just had to ask: Is this upcoming holiday? Uh, something that is very unusual, or is this just an annual event that uh, that we're dealing with? Well, this one evidently is unusual because the quote said that it hadn't happened since World War II, and uh, you know, <laughs> I was born I was born uh, before World War II started, so uh, that's a long time ago, and I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen with it. But I, I, there's some information on the CME website, John. Uh, Shane told me this morning that uh, the uh, CMEs mentioned something about it, but I received this from uh, one of our folks over in the UK, uh, over in actually Kingston, uh, outside of London. Uh, to alert me about it because I, I wasn't aware of it because, you know, I don't follow uh, news or fundamentals. But this is something, the fact that the market's closed for such a long period of time. Now, the futures will be trading, but the futures are such are such a small, uh, you know, part of the foreign exchange. I mean, you know, it's like probably less than 1%, the CME futures, compared to what's traded in the, uh, in the interbank market. So, the interbank, interbank market is still going to be trading. It's, the question is, how much liquidity are you going to have with the Bank of Japan being out of there? And they might not be out of there. They just might be in the in the foreground. You, you just don't know. I, I just think you have to be extremely careful. That would be my guess. Uh, very good. I do appreciate that. Uh, when you say this, I can't help but think, or put it this way, I've got a suspicion that um, this sounds like it's something unusual. And this is uh, coincidentally right at the time in which Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is dealing with Japanese officials on um, trade and currency uh, uh, details. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yes, my uh, antenna will go up just as yours. And uh, and frankly, Larry, I'll uh, put I'll broadcast a request to uh, those uh, people who are. Um, members of uh, TFNN's Tiger's Den, uh, they come up with any uh, elaboration upon how, how and why this is unusual, we'd certainly like to see that. The one thing we can rely on, Mr. Z, is David White, Mr. Google himself, P-O-L-R in the room, because he reads everything. I think he reads the <laughs> yes, Bible every day before he starts reading everything else, but he's got the wealth of information, and uh, it's not fake news. You know, when David looks at it, it's important. So I'm sure David will find something, and I'll be alert, too, and I'll send it out to the folks also, you know, that's interesting, because uh, anytime you have something unusual, like a market closing for a long period of time and hasn't done it in 80 years, 
Hmm, sounds like someone's getting ready to play some type of a game is what it sounds like to me. It, it does sound uh, vaguely like that. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your uh, help, Larry. Uh, upon start of your next segment, I'm going to ask if you can just share your two cents on the S&P index and its underlying, excuse me, and its futures, the ESM9 contract. Uh, how betcha. interesting that the high on Tuesday, then Wednesday, yesterday, is within just a couple of points of that September 21st high. Uh, having made that observation, I'll be interested to hear what you think that might mean. Be happy to do it, John. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, following up with the uh, questions we had with Mr. Z, I posted the chart for the E-mini S&P, and as you can see, we have touched the highlight, that red line, that means we were then just a few points of the old high. This could be a potential double top. We know that the NASDAQ has already broken above that line. We posted that early in the year or earlier in the show. Uh, the, the Dow is not going to make it mainly because of what's happening to 3M. That's over 100 points in the Dow Jones is 3M because it's a $200 stock, and these are price-weighted. They're not cap-weighted at the 
at the uh, Dow Jones. So that's what pushes it down. And so we'll uh, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, later in the day. But one or two things is happening. Either it's keeping the uh, ES from rallying or the ES is turning over. We don't know. It's, uh, you know, the Russell is still uh, the weakest of the group. But, uh, you know, the S&P is still, you know, not acting very good considering. But, you know, stop and think the Dow's down 100 and some points. And people look at that. They don't know that it's one stock. I mean, you hardly uh, find anybody that will will even notice it. But let's take a look here. Uh, the, the key level here is that uh, 2960 level. If we get above 2960 in the S&P, we're trading at 2930 roughly right now. That would tell us that would be a valid breakout. Whether it will be or not, I don't know. Now, we've had another request here to take a look at uh, copper, Dr. Copper, supposedly being the hold, hold, hold on the thing right here. Iron ore, iron ore is beyond my pay grade, Mr. Peak. I have never, uh, I've never traded it. Uh, about the closest thing that I have to iron ore is my uh, cast iron skillet that I cook in sometimes. So <laughs> anyway, let's look at the copper here. You know, you'll notice that we made a high up there at around three bucks a pound. Uh, we're now trading at around 288. The 382 retracement on this would come in right around 284, which is the old low from way back in on March the uh, the 25th. But the key point here is to look at the double bottom between August and January. You notice how you go down there where it says 103. That means you went a, a tad below where you were in August, just getting a few stops, and away you go. That's why these double tops and double bottoms are important, folks. They they define supply and demand. And we're seeing a potential double top in the uh, S&P. Uh, the NASDAQ also, it's gone a little bit above it, but if it were reversed from this uh, 78, 75 level, I don't know where it's trading, but the ABCD on that measured to uh, 78, 75. Let me double check just to see where that NASDAQ is trading because I've got my eye on that since I shorted it there. Hold on one second here. And uh, we are trading it. Oh, it's backed off a little bit. And yeah, we'll see what's happened. Now, high was 78.79, and now we're trading at 78.55. So the fact that we've backed off a little bit is actually uh, pretty interesting. This is uh, just to give you an example here. Just I'll put up the 15-minute chart. When I when I was posting it this morning, I'll just show you uh, what happened when it made that little bit higher high there. Let's just get it up here so we can take a quick look at it. I'm a little tough here on some of these uh, things, but you'll notice that we've broken from 78.75. We've already broken down 20 points, so that may mean that we're looking at something a, a lot lower, but we'll have to uh, wait and see. That 78.75 was a perfect ABCD, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens with that as we as we go through uh, the morning here. Now. I wanted to uh, bring to your attention, I, I think I've already covered 3M. Let me double check because I, I did want to bring that chart up because it was uh, it was showing that it was at real strong resistance uh, this morning, but I don't remember. Okay, give me a break here. That's Facebook. Oh, boy. I tell you, I'm going to have to lose my chart. My chartered members are putting charts in order because I seem to get them messed up all the time. I can't find that darn thing. So uh, it was a, a chart of, of uh, 3M, and basically it was setting right at a 50% retracement from the previous high. And then, of course, you know, it's uh, it's rolled over uh, quite a bit. This might be it. Let's take a look. There it is. Hold on. We got it. This takes me a little while to catch up with these, and we'll take a look at both this here. Uh, hold this. Let's see here. What do we got here? Peek is saying he's asking me a question here, and he says, we are in the longest bull market for bonds in history, or was there a larger bull market measured in time? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the, the bull market in bonds uh, peak topped uh, th uh, three years ago. In uh, 2016 is when the bonds topped at that 170 level. So that's uh, that's I don't know about the longest bull market in history. Uh, you'd have to, you know, I don't. Oh boy, okay. Well, the longest bull market in history has to be the stock market because it bottomed in '32. It bottomed in July of '32, and uh, it's been going up ever since. So it's got to be '32. So you're looking at 80 years right there. Uh, more than 80. That's what 90, uh, 97 years. 
Let's see, 32? No, it'd be 87 years from the time that the stock market bottomed. I mean, we had some recessions in there, but we've never had any depressions during that time. But uh, that has to be the longest one. I, I don't know. You know, the guy to ask is either Mr. Rhodes or Mr. Basil Chapman. They would know that. They do that long-term stuff. My my idea of long-term is if I make it till Friday, you know, if I do a two- or three-day swing, that's fine with me. By the way, someone asking a re very interesting question here. Um, yes, we're, you're looking at that Canadian dollar is right there. We've, we even mentioned that yesterday. We're getting up in that Canadian dollar very, very close. We'll post that, and then I've got to answer one of the questions from one of the emails that I received uh, last night and uh, we're getting almost up there to that 78 percent level is it there already are you kidding me i knew it was breaking out but i got to get on the ball on this one this is going to be an interesting one to look at on this canadian dollar because uh, we're almost up there you're right they're 135 and change so this tells you the dollar is uh, pretty strong here's a question that someone posed it's very interesting uh, he wants to be uh he wants to buy positions and add to his positions as he holds it for a very long time. There's nothing wrong with that, but it takes a special mindset to do that. First of all, if you want to do something like that, uh, try to study the work of um, uh, uh, James w Richard Wyckoff and also um, Schaubacher. Schaubacher was the um, son-in-law of Edwards, of Edwards and McGee, and those fellows worked on those types of things. What you have to do is you have to find a base position, and then you let your base position start. Let's say you start with five contracts of gold if you're bullish gold. So you buy five contracts of gold, and you wait for your next time to buy. You could buy it on a breakout if that's what your theory is. You could buy it on a retracement if that's what your theory is. But you have to have that plan set out, and you've got to follow it. And you're not you're not you're not going to have to waver from it because you know one of the things that's that's going on in these markets is the fact that you know we've been bullish for gold for you know quite some time in here we bottomed within one day of where we thought we were going to be so uh, whether this is going to be you know something really super big or not we'll have to wait and see but it, it's starting to work the way that we thought but if you're going to do that it's a, it's based on you to do the planning. And remember that when you're doing that, you're, you're, you're exposing yourself to extra risk because you're adding more contracts. Even though you're adding them, you know, with profits that you're making, you still have to protect yourself. It's, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't have at risk. And that's the main thing. Always looking over your shoulder, protecting yourself. So if you're looking at a pyramid in contrast, contest, then uh, that's different. You know, I'm at a stage in my life that the pyramiding not interesting to me anymore. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, uh, we've had a question uh, about the, uh, the gold, and I posted the chart uh, that we did on uh, Tuesday, and I said the best time to buy it would be Wednesday morning. That was the low yesterday. Uh, it's hard. It had a pretty good run so far today, but that's uh, you know what we're looking at. We were, we're thinking the day would come in on the 22nd of April, that head and shoulders pattern. It has certainly held so far. It came in two days later. But, you know, the little move we've had, we've only rallied about $15 off the bottom, so it's nothing to be excited about as of yet, but that's what we're looking at. Now, we got a question from uh, Peter up there in Utah uh, about the uh, where do you take your FIB numbers from. Folks, th that's where people get more confused about Fibonacci than, than they really should, because if you stop and think what a market really does, it can go up down or sideways and so you need to take those swings that lead to what's going to happen in the future in other words we have that ABCD pattern so when you're when you're taking your fib points you certainly want to take it off the a leg at the bottom you want to take it off the B leg which is the secondary bottom and then you have the expansion numbers that go from CB or BC up to point D so you have to look at all those together and when you're doing that is you're looking at the different ratios coming together. If you can see this chart of the GDX, you'll notice you'll see all these different ratios that are marked there. Those come from the uh, the Pesaveno pattern from the Ensign software. Now, everybody's using that now. They call it a lot of different things, but when the, the folks at Ensign built that for me 30 some years ago, you know, that was really, for me, was really state of the art because it told us that, you know, that's pretty much, uh, you know, what the market's doing is you're just going and looking what happened in the past and then determining whether you think it's going to move into the future, repeating over and over again. That's what we're watching. Here's a perfect example. If you just take a look here at the gold chart, this is the one that we were watching very, very closely. If you wanted to see, uh oh, just give me a second here to get the right, uh, the right thing up here. You'll notice that uh, you're looking at these um, a, B, C, D patterns coming in here, and the 50% level came in at 1267, and we were looking for the possibility of an expansion down there, you know, to 1259 to 1255. Well, we didn't get to that, and we were looking at that at the same time that silver was doing the same thing, and we have to take our hats off to Ruby because she absolutely nailed that low in silver at uh, 1469. So that's pretty much uh, as pretty much what it is. Um, uh, David's posting something here from uh, Jesse Livermore, and it says another lesson I learned early in life: there is nothing new in Wall Street. God bless that. There can't be because speculation is as old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before, and it'll happen again. Jesse Livermore, and believe me, it it repeats over and over again. Dr. Andrew Lowe in his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street from 2002 actually proved that with formulas that are way beyond uh, my pay grade. Remember, speculation comes from the Latin word 
meaning to observe. And that's what we're doing here with pattern uh, recognition is we're observing these patterns and trying to find if they're going to have some type of a of a rep repetition. And that's what we're looking And we're wrong sometimes, folks. I mean, hell, sometimes hell, we're wrong a lot. So that's the main thing is to keep in mind, you know, what we're looking at here on some of these things. Now, we've gone up $17 now in gold from 67 up to 84. That's the half harmonic number. The harmonic number is gold is 34. And so uh, that's going to be pretty an interesting resistance if it, it can get through. It really, if it can close above 1290 in the gold, it's on its way. So we'll see. Uh, that's right. This is a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, Mr. Z is talking about speculation as an activity of making money, uh, not being right or wrong. Yeah, it's it's not a question of being right or wrong. It's a question of making money, and that's the whole thing. And also protecting yourself uh, on the downside. So we'll 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 keep an eye on that uh, as we look at some of these other charts here this morning. Going rather quickly. I really appreciate the questions, folks. It really makes. Um, um, Ruby's asking what will be the possible target on gold and silver to the upside. We made the first target in gold this morning, Ruby. It's only been uh, two days, so it made $17 in two days. That's telling you that it wants to go higher. And, uh, you know, it's got, it's got potential to really be big because of the head and shoulders pattern and the fact that the whole world is bearish. And not only that, it's doing it in the face of a really strong dollar, which is highly unusual. And uh, that's, um, you know, that's it. You know, what, who was it that said, uh, uh, if, you don't re if you don't study history, you're bound to repeat it? I don't know who said that, but uh, that's absolutely true because nothing, you know, it repeats so much that it's just uh, uh, over and over again. So that's pretty much, you know, what we're, what we're watching here. But those are the first ones. I don't know what the first objective would be on the, the stuff. We'll see. The grain, okay, I'm going to talk about the grains here. Well, we've only got about three minutes to go. The reason why I haven't bought the grains, and I, I took a nibble at soybeans, as you remember, early in the week using that SOYB, um, which is the soybean ETF. I believe someone in the room, I think it was Terry, told us about it. So don't blame me for that uh, $200 loss. Let's blame Terry because I don't want to take the responsibility for it. I'm just joking, Terry. Keep your sense of humor. Anyway, uh, you know, the only reason I'm not looking at the grains now, I'm going to look at them, of course, uh, over the weekend because I've got some, you know, updated charts that I, I certainly have to look at. And with this breakout in the dollar, uh, i.e. weakness in the euro, that's telling us that yeah, now with the prices of the dollar going up, that means our grains are costing more. Here we have a huge surplus, and now we're raising the price by the dollar. Now why, let's stop and think, let's do a little conspiracy thinking here for a minute. Why would we be pushing the dollar up? Let mm, me see, we're in negotiation with China. China's one of our biggest grain buyers. Hmm, sounds like the old Russian grain robbery of 1972. So let's keep a close eye on that because if they buy it all, guess what's going to happen, folks? The cure for low prices is low prices, and the cure for high prices is high prices. So. Pay attention to that. It's very, very important. But the greens are heading down. They're, they're getting banged around quite a bit. And so I would be thinking that we'd probably be looking at uh, a bottom in here somewhere. I believe we're going to have Norm Winsky on next week sometime. Uh, let's see. Today is the uh, 20. Oh, my goodness. I missed Arch's birthday. Arch's birthday was 17th of uh, April. That was the same birthday as uh, J.P. Morgan. And son of a gun, I missed it. So, hmm, I think we're having Arch on on the 4th of May, which will be uh, next, uh, third or fourth next Friday, I believe. Uh, I think we have him on then. We'll have to wait. To see. Oh, one other point of interest, folks. CNBC called me, and they're interested uh, having me on. They're, they're <laughs> I guess, going to have old folks week. You know, people that started it uh, were on the show 30 years ago. And uh, back in April 17th of uh, 1989 is when it first started, and I uh, I was on one of those shows uh, coming out of uh, California at the time. But uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it or not. It's uh, it don't mean anything to me anymore. You know, it really doesn't. But uh, I might. You know, if uh, if Peter Lydes does it, I'll probably do it because I'll have to wait and see. All right, let's move on here to a few other things that we need. Oh, the the bell's getting ready to ring already. Wow, you made my job real easy today, folks. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the questions coming in because 
this is not an easy gig for me, and uh, hopefully that we will get this thing uh, moving and we'll be able to see uh, some of the things uh, happening in out of the future. We need to get that gold up above that 1287 level, folks. That would give us a pretty good idea of uh, where we stand. So 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <clears throat> okay, folks, I wanted to bring to your attention the British pound versus the U.S. dollar because we did get down to that 29, 129 level. We got as low as 128.70. So it's trading at 129.10 right now. Uh, you do not want it to get below 128.70, so your risk there is under, oh my goodness, that's only what, that's just a very small amount. That's under $200 risk. So that's certainly one that um, you need to want to keep an eye on. Uh, we're, we'll have to uh, wait and see You know how much farther the euro is going to break, but it looks like it's going to hit the 1100 level uh, without too much trouble because we've been to 1124. So uh, we'll be watching that. I think the number is 110.90 on the daily chart. There's a little three drive pattern there, but the weekly is pointing way lower, folks. We're looking at 108 to 106 in the euro if this move continues on. And it could stop at any time, as we know, because uh, the dollar index has some 
uh, very strong resistance at that 99.50 level on the long-term weekly that we've posted in our newsletter several times. Re repeating again, I'm sorry about the videos not having any sound. Nothing I could do about that, and I'm getting a new program today. Hopefully, we'll get it installed, and we'll be able to uh, look at what's going on with the uh, with these things as we're watching. So we'll pay close attention to that uh, also. Um, basically, that's pretty much it. We'll see what happens. One of these days, there are going to be a correction in the stock market. Whether it'll happen in my lifetime or not, I don't know. But the fact that we hit that big ABCD in the NASDAQ today at uh, – uh, 79, uh, 75, the high being 79, 79, it broke 20 points. You know, maybe that doesn't mean anything. Maybe it's a buying opportunity, and maybe it's the first sign that there is going to be a little bit of a correction. All I know is the markets have not been reacting to good news. And some of them have, of course, like Microsoft and a few others, but others that have been pretty good news has not done very well. So let's keep in line. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless, folks.